are already max level, you can tell the guy, hey, I know this stuff. I don't need to do what you want me to do. Basically, he's just going to tell you to go around, collect some things, craft some items, prove that you know the, the trade. And then you're certified. Once you got all six certifications, you can go back to these boards and the boards will give you a daily. There's going to be uh, one for the blacksmithing, woodworking, and clothing on one board. And there's another board for provisioning, alchemy, and enchanting. You can pick up all six of the dailies, go do all six of the dailies. And then once you do them, uh, it basically tells you, I need you to go make two helms, two chests, and six daggers or something like that for blacksmithing. You get the idea. that That's basically the way it works. You make stuff for these dailies. You go and turn them in. Um at the location it wants you to turn them in at. It varies depending on your level. For Bet 14, it's Craglorn. You take those to Upper Craglorn, turn those in. So once you turn them in, you have a chance at getting a survey report, which is going to be like a, a little map of Craglorn or wherever you're at. And you go to that area on the map, and you will um, find these special named nodes for like blacksmithing, woodworking, and clothing that you can harvest and it will give you materials back and you have a chance of getting like Nern Crux and you can take the materials you harvest, possibly get legendary materials out of it. The provisioning, enchanting, and alchemy are instant. You turn it in, it gives you a reward and you know that's that's pretty much the way they work. You also get a lot of inspiration for doing these. It's like 20,000 inspiration for blacksmithing, woodworking, and clothing. I can't remember right off the top of my head if it's 20,000. I think it is a little bit less, maybe, for the uh, alchemy, enchanting, and provisioning. But it, it's still a lot. So it's a good way to level up and make your own decisions if you think it's worth it or not. Next is going to be new crafting styles. They've added a new style. Uh, that you can make your armor look like. This new style is Dwemer. So we've seen some of this stuff at QuakeCon, the Dwemer armor, and they do have it in the game now, and they've kind of made things a little bit different and more difficult to get these. You have uh, pages now. So what they've done is they've broken down all the items. So you got like a page for an axe. You got a page for a chest. You got a page for a pair of boots. Um page for destruction staves or, or whatever each individual one has a page and they're purple rarity or you can get lucky and find the dwarven motif the dwarven motif operates just like all the other motifs except this thing is legendary and it's really hard to get and it'll teach you everything if you find it so where do you find it if you go to dwarven ruins or dwemer ruins anywhere there's a dwemer ruin you can go into it check all the pots the urns the crates the everything nooks and crannies check it all that's where these things have a chance to drop and these things are on a, a cooldown so once you go into a dwemer ruin and you start opening these things up go through it all open up everything and then leave it and it's going to be like 30 minutes or so before you can actually go into any dwemer ruin and search again so it keeps people from just non-stop farming until they get everything uh you have to be pretty aggressive and keeping up with, uh, you know, can I go find more stuff again or not? You also will find Dwemer scraps. So instantly you're going to say, well, how do I actually craft these things once I have the, the motif? How do I make them? If you go into ruins and you're killing Dwemer, you're doing dungeons, killing Dwemer, they can drop Dwemer scraps. So you can take 10 Dwemer scraps, turning into a Dwemer frame, and then go to a crafting table and make Dwemer armor. So let's go ahead and pop back in game here real quick. This right here is a live shot of uh, ESO. Right here is a Dwemer heavy helm. Also down here is a Dwemer shield. So that's just a preview at what Dwemer looks like. Looks very similar to, to Skyrim's Dwemer helm, definitely. So the light armor looks very, very good. The the medium armor, again, decently done. Some nice sets that you can get, and you can die these things with a die system, however you want to die them. So all that's tied in. Switching over next 
to the ninth crafted trait set items called the Twice Born Star. Uh, just to kind of quickly go over traits as you research traits in your research tables you're going to be able to go craft set items and the more traits you know the higher requirement set item traits you can craft so this is where this comes in if you know all nine traits we in 1.4 got the nern home trait so if you know uh all nine traits with nern honed as well you're going to be able to craft a new set item called the twice born star the twice born star I've not went to recheck it again recently, but it used to give health, magic, and stamina for 2, 3, and 4. Then it gave you a fifth set item bonus that would give you uh, the ability to have two Mundus Stones active at once. And you can have two Mundus Stones of the Thief up at once if you wanted to. That's perfectly fine. So that's the ninth crafted trait twice born star you can do that in light medium or heavy the location is in upper craglorn it's kind of towards the middle of the map uh, i cannot remember the name of the place right off the top of my head but upper craglorn is where it's located and you do need all nine traits researched a lot of researching time and do not forget in 1.4 they added the ability for us to put another point in our researching to reduce the time by 20 percent 25 percent something like that and it caps the research time at 30 days so if you've not picked up that and you're a craftsman go in there and pick it up next chat bubbles chat bubbles is in the game as well if you go into your settings interface chat bubbles you can turn them on you can filter it by people that you know people that's like in party or whatever yell say whisper all kinds of different options to filter your chat bubbles so if you just want to see the people that you know you can turn that on and you only see the people that you know and the little chat bubble pops up above its head they look very nice and I've not seen any problems with them so you know the people that wanted the chat bubbles in they're in now and you can turn it on and off they've also added right below the chat bubbles there's a frames per second and a latency uh, performance bars so you can turn it on it's just one bar they're side by side Again, very small, out of the way. You can move it around wherever you want it on your screen and lock it in place as well. Next, talking about delves. Alkir Desert, East March, Malabal Tor all now contain larger delves with more monsters and more loot. This is an ongoing effort with all delves across Tamriel entirely. They're making them all larger. So uh, each update they've been hitting some of these and they also went back to the first... Uh, some of the first delves in the first zones like Aradon, Dell's Claim, Glen Umbra, Crypt Watch, and Stonefall's Emberflint Mine, those delves have been increased as well. So that's good. Next, PvP. And this is a sensitive subject right now. Forward camps have been removed. They're gone. If you have a forward camp still in your bags you can still deploy it that forward camp will have reduced hp it will degrade faster so once they're gone they're gone completely you must be rank six to deploy any forward camp they cannot be traded so they're phasing these things out pretty aggressively flaming oil will now only affect targets that are at least six meters below you oil will no longer do any damage if used on the ground you can no longer discover enemy way shrines in Cyrodiil if you had previously discovered enemy way shrines they're now revoked moving on to attribute point resets do not forget guys I done it myself I'm guilty as charged went halfway through a dungeon and forgot to put my scope my attribute points in Zenimax reset all the attribute points now everybody's going to scurry off to their character sheet and say, oh my god, I forgot to put my attribute points in. They've been reset. Completely. So put them back in there. Don't tell nobody. Next. Devil noob. Some skill points were reset. Annulment, Deathstroke, all two-handed, one-handed and shield, dual-wield, and bow. 
all those skill points have been reset. So again, if you had those skills on your bar and you're wondering where they went, there you go. They've been reset because they got some significant changes to them. Again, I'm not going to go over all these changes with the, the stamina-based build stuff. Read it. Forums.elderscrollsonline.com. A lot of balance changes for stamina-based builds. But what we will go over, as I always do, is the classes. So, first, Dragon Knights, buckle up. Here we go. We're going to fly through the class changes and let you guys know what has changed in your class trees. I gotta get a drink first. I'll let y'all get caught up. All right, here we go. Arden Flame, Dragon Knight Standard. Everybody's like, Dragon Knight Standard. Dirt patches left behind this ability will now disappear when the ability is removed. Not a big change. Okay, just graphical guys. Don't freak out about standard. Draconic Power, Choking Talons, Dark Talons more. Fixed an issue where this ability wasn't getting more powerful when you ga gained a rank. There is now more damage added on the ranks 2 through 4. We also fixed an issue where this ability was fading out instantly. Dark Talons fixed an issue where this ability was causing a slight reduction in performance. Reflective Scales fixed an issue where health bars could become desynced when reflecting bow attacks with this ab active ab ability active. Under Earth and Heart, Magma Shell fixed an issue where this ability's graphical effect would be removed when an ally activated the Protective Shell synergy. Molten Weapons, when a second Dragonite casts this ability, a first caster of the ability no longer loses their caster ability bonus. Obsidian Shard Stonefist Morph rank one of this ability now has the same travel speed as other ranks. So that's what's been changed for the Dragon Knights. Up next, we've got the Night Blades. So Night Blades, listen up. Assassination Death Stroke. This ability now deals 35% increased damage and no longer scales up with increased ultimate. Death Stroke now increases the damage you deal uh, to a target by 20% for six seconds. Jesus Freak, thank you for the follow, man. New follower. Double Take, Blur Morph. This ability now displays its graphical effect at the correct time. Mark Target, and this ability has a new first-person geographical effect. Also, under Night Blade Changes under Assassination, Teleport Strike. The tooltip for this ability now specifies that it immobilizes other player characters instead of stunning them. Under the shadow tree for, dry, or, uh, for night blades, you will no longer be revealed by the following abilities while shadow cloak is active. Restoration, stab, light attacks, inner fire, and cripple. They also fixed an issue where casting force siphon on an enemy would remove their shadow cloak. Your cloak will no longer be removed if you cast scorched earth, volleymorph, or caltrops, then cast shadow cloak. Concealed weapons, veld strike morph, the stealth speed bonus from this ability now persists if you weapon swap twice. Mass Hysteria, Aspect of Terror Morph. This ability now displays a snare graphic on affected targets. Veld Strike. This ability will no longer stun and off-balance enemies who dodge the attack. Siphoning, Swallow Soul, Strife Morph. Fixed an issue where this ability's healing effect was playing on enemies. So that's it for Nightblades. Moving Sorcerers now. Sorcerers, Storm Calling, Mages, Fury. This ability, Explosion, can no longer be reflected. Liquid Lightning, Lightning Splash Morph. Fixed an issue where this ability was unintentionally doing extra damage to the first and second hit. Overload, fixed an issue where this ability's geographical graphical sorry fixed an issue where this ability's graphical effect could get stuck on you if the ability is toggled off during a heavy attack dark magic daedric mines fixed an issue with this ability where the mines could explode on larger monsters that were several meters away dark exchange the crystals from this ability now line up with the streams of the synergy lastly under summoning unstable familiar 2 fixed an issue where this ability wasn't dealing the correct amount of bonus damage. 
Wing Twilight, this pet no longer gives experience if you kill him. And in the last, but 